scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at the left hand. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger. I was naked, and you gave me clothes. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked? Gave you clothing. And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited, visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire. Prepare for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. And they also will answer me. Lord, when was it that it was we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked? or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you. Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. May God have blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of the Scriptures. Thank you, Gary. Would you pray with me? Lord, take my lips and speak through them. And take our ears and open them so I may hear your word for us. And take our hearts and our lives and fill them with your love. And then guide us so that we may be your faithful servants, grounded in your word and in your love. Amen. So this morning, our scripture passage for Christ the King Sunday is what's known as the, the, the judgment of the nations. And like I said earlier, the Christian year, in the Christian year, this is the last Sunday of the of the, the year. Next Sunday, the first Sunday of Advent is the beginning. But this day is a special day when we remember that Jesus is the King, the King of everything, the entire universe, and that one day He will come and judge the nations, the righteous from the unrighteous, just like our passage today describes. And so this passage is called the judgment of the nations, when Jesus describes what it will be like when he, the Son of Man, comes and he will do three things. He will sit on his throne of glory, he will gather all of the nations before him, and he will make this separation. He will separate the sheep and the goats, the sheep being his true followers and the goats being those who did not follow them. And so the separation is what I want to focus on for a moment. Jesus tells us that we will be separated during the final judgment. And this is something that we see all throughout Scripture. This is a description of that moment, but we are also, uh, there's all kinds of other parables where the separation is uh, noted or it is in a theme in different parables. But we know that we are living in a world with both good 
good and evil. Because good things happen and bad things happen. And so we know that there will be a day when there will be no more darkness, no more evil, no more mourning, no more crying. So we know that there will have to be a separation when Jesus comes. And the final victory is had and everything is good. Jesus tells us in the scriptures, uh, the, the parable of the wheat and the weeds need to be separated. He tells us of the parable of the net which catches good fish and some bad fish that have to be thrown back. Two weeks ago, we talked about the parable of the ten bridesmaids, that, where there were five wise ones and five unwise ones, and where the unwise ones missed out on the wedding day. And these are just a few of the parables and the teachings of Jesus that talk about that there's going to be a separation. Because we know that good will win one day, and the good will be separated from the bad. Just like the sheep and the goats are separated in our passage today. And Jesus even warns us about that there are wolves dressed in sheep's clothing. And so Jesus doesn't want us to be unaware or caught by surprise. And so this is how Jesus also talks about how we will be separated, right? It's the people who gave food to the hungry, who gave drink to the thirsty, who welcomed the stranger, who clothed the naked, who cared for the sick, and visited those who were in prison. He said the goats are the ones that go to the left. They go to the eternal fire that Jesus says is prepared for the devil and his angels, and will go into eternal torment. And the sheep go into eternal life. So in reading this list, how are you feeling about it? Anybody feel really good? Anybody a little nervous? Are you ready for Jesus to come and to judge us today? Or do you need a little bit of time to get things in order? You see, when was the last time that you did every single one of those things? I think sometimes we have to really know what's happening in this passage. So I want to point out a few things. It's kind of a did you notice section. The first thing I want us to notice about this, and this is something that's really important, that there is not a single word in this passage about having the right theology or about saying the, the right creed or about being orthodox, or about having the right kind of music, or about having the, the building clean. There's not, not a single <coughs> word about that. What Jesus says is going to be the thing that he will use to judge us is according to whether or not we saw the face of Jesus in the face of those people who are in the and whether we act, acted in mercy and in love towards them, or whether we didn't. You see, the, in the church, we argue about a, lot of, about a lot of things that don't really matter. We spend a lot of time on that. But what we really should be doing is feeding the hungry, giving drink to the thirsty, caring for those who are sick and in prison. Welcoming strangers. Those are the things that really matter. Now the second thing I want to point out is that both the sheep and the goats are shocked to find themselves sorted where they were sorted. Did you notice that? Here's the first part. It says, Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? They were shocked that they were included because they were like, you said we did this, but we didn't even realize we never saw you. But Jesus says, just as you did to the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. You see, they saw the face of Jesus in the people who were in need. The least of these. 
And in doing so, they served Jesus without even realizing it. And on the other hand, those people who were sorted into the goat section also were kind of shocked too. Because they said this. Then they also will answer, Lord, what was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick and, or in prison and did not care for you? They were like, Lord, we've been on the lookout for you. We, did, we just didn't see you. And again, Jesus says, just as you did not do it to the least of these, you did not do it to me. They did not see Jesus' face in the face of those who were in need. And so they didn't bother helping. And so they get sorted the way that they were sorted. So they were both shocked and caught by surprise to be sorted where they were sorted. Now, before we go any further, we need to talk a little theology here. If you were to read this passage on its own without any context or uh, the larger kingdom vision in your mind, you might come away thinking that you can earn your way to heaven by doing these things. Or that this is how we get to heaven. By working, by giving food to the hungry, drink to the thirsty, and so on and so on. And this can run you into some trouble. On, if you read this on its own, and come, you can come out thinking that this is the, the only thing that really matters is how we treat the least of these. And going deeper and theologically into that line of thinking would mean that we earn our salvation or we unearn our salvation based on how we treat a specific group of people. And this would mean that we are not saved through faith in Christ. This would mean that Jesus' death on the cross meant nothing. That he didn't really have to die because really all that matters is if you gave somebody that was hungry food. It's a very dangerous line of thinking that can come from this. And so I want us to just think theologically here for a moment. As United Methodists, we believe that we are saved through faith. We believe that it is through the sheer grace of God, the unmerited, undeserved grace of God, that we are saved when we believe in Jesus Christ. We do not believe that we are saved through works or through buying our way in. We're on the Protestant, the you know, the Protestant arm of the church, which rebelled against that. The selling of indulgences and the belief that you could earn your way in to heaven. However, I do believe that things like feeding the hungry, welcoming the stranger, caring for the needy, those who are in prison or who are sick are signs of someone who has a healthy faith life. These are signs that someone has come to faith in Christ and has responded to Christ's invitation to change their lives and live in the ways that He taught us to live. So instead of thinking this, like, this passage like, oh my gosh, I haven't gone to prison to visit anybody, I'm doomed. I want us to remember that this description of the judgment of the nations comes in a line of multiple parables where Jesus is teaching about what the end times would be like, about how it will be like when he returns. And so in some way, it's not a historical description or a prediction about how judgment day will be exactly. But sometimes it can be seen more of a metaphor, more like how we see the parables. So I want us to think about this for a moment. This passage about being separated from sheep and goats and whether we have clothed the naked, welcomed the stranger, given food to the hungry. As if we were going to the doctor. When we go to the doctor, we get all kinds of things checked out, right? 
We get on a scale, we have our blood pressure taken, we get blood work done, we get our temperature checked, right? To see whether we're healthy or not, right? To see if there's any deeper things wrong with us. I tend to think of this passage like we're getting some baseline checks done. Like we're getting our pulse taken or that we are getting our blood pressure taken. Feeding the hungry is not a ticket to heaven, but it's a really important part about what it means to be a follower of Christ. The things in this list are things that we should naturally be doing as Christians. Now, again, we can't do everything all of the time, but we can do some of those things when we come across that opportunity to do so. It doesn't mean you have to visit the prison, a prisoner every week. It doesn't mean you have to be doing these things all of the time. But doing some of the things on this list is a sign of somebody who has a healthy faith. And on the other hand, if you have never done a single one of these things, it might be a warning sign that you have some deeper spiritual problems that need to be addressed. Because loving those whom Jesus gave his life for, which means everybody, particularly those who are undervalued in society, is a primary expression of our love for God. And so if we can't help the stranger, or if we can't welcome the stranger, if we can't feed the hungry, if you can't visit people who are sick, then you're not expressing God's love in a way that Jesus taught us to do that. So I mentioned that there are both sheep and goats in the world. And the sheep and the goats in Jesus' story were both shocked to be sorted how they were. I imagine some of the goats were actually probably some of the very religious people in Jesus' time, who were very self-righteous and yet looked down upon those, the people that were the least of these. And then were shocked to say, well, well, Jesus, you weren't there. If you were there, I would have helped. And so one of my things I want us to talk about as we close is to don't be shocked. Because Jesus may come back at any time. We never know when our time on earth is going to end. So when that happens, I don't want you to be shocked. To be sorted somewhere where you weren't expecting to be sorted. So to avoid being shocked and to avoid being sorted in a way that you don't want to be sorted in, that means we need to do regular spiritual checkups. To see if, you are, if your faith life is healthy or to see maybe there's some kind of underneath cancer that is digging at your spiritual life. So we need to see how we are doing. So this week I want you to ask yourself these things. Have I helped somebody recently? Have I engaged in an act of mercy recently? Or do you find yourself asking this? When you see somebody in need. Oh, do they really need my help? They don't look like they really need help. They don't look like they deserve help. Are they just looking for a handout? You see, Jesus said, feed the hungry. Not judge the needy on their neediness. So I said, my friends, give yourself a spiritual checkup this week. Because when it comes to the judgment, when it comes to the time in our life, our year is over and we go to meet Jesus, I really hope to be sorted into Jesus' flock and welcomed in my eternal home with Him. And I hope that's what you're hoping for too. I think that's the reason why you're here. And so my friends, let's not be shocked. 
And what that means is that we need to be about the work of being spiritual. And that means feeding the hungry, giving drink to the thirsty, welcoming the stranger, clothing the naked, caring for the sick, and visiting those who are in prison. My friends, when we do that, we need to do that as if we were serving Jesus himself. We need to seek the face of Jesus in the least of these, so that we may be sorted in the way that we want to be sorted. So may we go out serving Christ and see Christ in every single person we serve. Amen.